Scott, I just want to say um, good evening to everyone. And, and uh, I want to just reiterate that uh, I am, I'm sorry, I'm having a little background noise if, if anyone has that. So I uh, apologize for that. Our custodian group is in the building right now. But like um, Honorable Scott said, my name is Jason Strickland and I have the honor and privilege of serving as a superintendent of Hogan Prep Academy. I just would like to thank the commission for their time this evening, evening and their consideration of our renewal application. I wanna thank uh, Ms. Robin and Ms. Martha for their guidance and um, support through this process. Uh, I also wanna uh, identify and appreciate the association, the Charter School Association for their help. And I also would like to thank the Hogan Ram fam for all of their support and work through this whole process. Be our partners, our families, our students, our staff. They have worked so very hard to get us to this point for consideration of renewal. Uh, I'd like to kind of talk about this work through um, an organized way of um, who we are, what we're trying to do, how we're trying to do it, and why we're trying to do it. So let me start off with who we are, our, our demographics. We have a student population of approximately about a thousand students and we serve students from K through 12. And we also have a preschool partnership with Operation Breakthrough that funnels students up to us. Our population is 100% African-American and it is 100% free and reduced. It means 100% of our students fall below that poverty line. The footprint on which we serve in the community is pretty much the Swope Corridor. We pull students from approximately three to five zip codes. And to be really frank and transparent with you, those zip codes are some of the most distressed and challenged zip codes in the entire city based upon some of the data related to income levels, high school um, graduation rates, et cetera. Um, the history of Hogan started off as a um, private Catholic school in the 40s. And it ran as a private Catholic school for uh, several decades, right up into about 1999, where it transitioned into one of the original charter schools in the metropolitan area. Um, that, rich, that history has been long and rich. Ironically, I will be walking around many places and I'll have on some Hogan shirt or Hogan Flag and someone will come up to me and say, hey, my grandfather went there, or hey, uh, I know Hogan. And it, it is a really nice feeling to be recognized among the city. In fact, I even got drinks bought for me one night because I had on a Hogan shirt and they said Hogan used to beat them soundly in athletics. Um, I, but I wanna draw your attention into our history to a time period um, around 2014. Our history has been rich and we had a lot of things in it to celebrate, but frankly, we've had some down times and um, pretty much that time period that marked some down times was around 2014. And when I say that, I mean, we started to tr have a trajectory of some of our most important metrics that was not trending the right way. Um, and unfortunately, we, and there are lots of reasons why that is, and you have that in the charter school application, but the bottom line is, from about 2014, we started to really underserve our students and fam. And so around 2019, there was a lot of courageous leadership, a lot of important partnerships that were established that really emphasized and committed to Hogan being better for our students and families. And we built that transformation on what we called our transformational pillars. And those transformational pillars were leadership, cultural climate, teaching and learning, operation and governance. And so from about 2019 to the present, the staff and partners have invested a lot of time and energy in, in these areas to be sure that we are pointed in the right direction to do better for our students. And what does doing better for our students mean? That means what are we trying to do? Well, you have a copy of our vision statement and you have copies of our mission statement. Those things are posted in a lot of different places, so I won't take the time to read the entire thing to you or those entire statements to you, but I'm gonna pull out some of the most meaningful words from those statements. In our vision, we aspire to helping our students reach their greatest potential. In our mission, we work 
daily, consistently to help them unlock that greatest potential so they graduate with a distinct competitive advantage. And oftentimes um, vision and missions are just words on a paper. So what does that actually mean? What does that actually look like? Well, it is our intent to make a graduate and a diploma from Hogan really mean something. We want it to be more than a piece of paper. We want it to be a piece of paper that represents, this is a young person who has the academic skills, the social emotional skills, the real world learning experiences, the leadership um, experiences that really make them ready for college career and life. And so we have created a profile of our students and we have some distinct benchmark areas that are critically important to show that they are on track and on time to graduate ready for career, college or life. Um, a few of those um, highlights from the profile that we have created at fifth, at, um, fifth grade, we want to make sure our young person is middle school ready. They have strong academics and social and emotional skills, and they are very self-aware of the things they like, the things that they are good at. Um, at eighth grade, when they exit our middle school, we want to build off of those skills, make sure they continue to have those academic and social and emotional skills. We want to be sure that they have leadership experiences then make them distinct. And we also wanna be sure they leave our middle school with an individual plan of study that allows them to move to the high school and be ready to really focus and prepare for life after high school. And that means they have those academic skills, those social emotional skills, they have a plan for life after high school and they graduate with a minimum of one market value asset market value asset being a client-based experience, a work experience, be that an internship or some thing, a project that a client, industry client has given us, some college and career or some college hours, an industry recognized experience or some kind of meaningful entrepreneur experience. We wanna be sure that our students graduate academically sound, social emotionally sound in a minimum of one of those market value assets. So how do we want to do that? We want to do that through a personalized learning experience. This is our theory of action. Now, personalized learning experience is a sophisticated um, kind of concept, but it includes for us a system of advocacy that we advocate and have relationships with students, that we give them strong pedagogy through our instructional model, and that's the Danielson model. And we wanna be sure that it also um, is flexible in a way that it meets a student where they are and it takes them where they need to be. Um, and it's real world learning based, it's project based, it connects to the real world. So students know why they are doing that. And it's organized in these particular phases. At the elementary school, it's awareness. They know the importance of what they're learning. They know about themselves. They know how it connects to their future. At middle school, they start to dive a little deeper and explore. And they start to explore through things like job shadowing, mock interviews, career jumping experience. And then high school, they drill even deeper and they start to prepare by those internships, those dual credit hours, those real world learning projects, those entrepreneur experiences. And then they graduate with their distinct competitive advantage. So this is, takes us to the why. And, um, you know, this is a, a statement that we've used in several, frankly, presentations and, and our high school principal has used this and it is very eloquently written and, it, and it's meaningful. But I wanna try to express the why to you through what might be something that, that kind of resonates in a different way with you. Earlier, I mentioned to you that um, we pull our students from approximately three to five zip codes. Well, you may be aware that sadly um, in 2020, the Kansas City um, area set a record for homicides. And that is never a record you really want to set. But as I dug into the data, you know, I, I tell you, we serve 
a population that is distressed. And I mentioned graduation rates, I mentioned income. But related to this homicide data point, there are approximately 160 homicides in the metro area. 130 plus of them came from the zip codes that we serve. Now I pause there intentionally for a little bit of effect, but hopefully allowing that to sink in a bit. And if that doesn't quite kind of hit the way it should hit, we just had a murder happen on Sunday. And that murder was one of our Hogan students. One of our Hogan students died and was killed on Sunday. And that statistic I told you about all the murders of the neighbors, the families, the friends that our students deal with is one way of looking at it. But the fact that we actually lost a student this Sunday is tragic. We at Hogan have an opportunity to break this kind of cycle of tragedy by giving our young people a quality education. What we are doing is important. We have to get them prepared for life. We have to get them ready to enter the workforce and we have to get them ready to change their communities so their community can be better for the next generation. Hogan is ready to do our part because we know that we have amazing students, we have amazing families, and we have amazing staff committed to helping them. We are asking that we have an opportunity to do amazing for those young people so that they can transform their community into a safer and better place for themselves and for their families and for generations to come. So with that, I will be quiet and hopefully I have not gone too long because I really had to pull back on the passion because this is something I truly, truly believe in and I believe that we are positioned well to do good things for our young people. So I am quiet at this time and passing it back to you, Honorable Scott. Thank you, Jason, uh, and a great presentation. And obviously where you're located makes a big difference in the group of people you deal with. So we appreciate your, uh, your passion and your investment in those students. And uh, we look forward to a great turnaround there at Hogan as we move forward in, in the future. I wanna say I'm grateful for, for Bailey with the Missouri Charter Public School Association for um, facilitating the discussion tonight. And Bailey, I'm gonna turn it over to you. You're a great, uh, a great director of traffic on Zoom. So uh, we'll turn it to you and uh, look forward to the comments. Great, thank you. So at this time we will start, uh, we will begin taking public comment. Just please note that uh, we would like to keep your comments under two minutes just so we can hear from everyone. And with that being said, we will first begin with Annalise London and I will now unmute you. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Great. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you. I'm actually um, speaking on behalf of a parent of one of our middle school students who was not able to attend this evening, but she passed along a letter she'd like me to read. She actually was a graduate of Hogan um, in the early years as a charter school and chose to send her student to our middle school beginning this year. So I'll begin with her letter now. I'm writing this letter in support of Hogan Middle School, home of the Rams. When it came to, sent to selecting a middle school for my daughter, selecting Hogan was pretty easy. We had been a part of the Kansas City Public School District for some time, kindergarten through fifth grade. We felt she got nothing out of it. She was not reading on grade level and was struggling in math too. It seemed her teachers were telling us what they thought we wanted to hear instead of helping us. That's when my best friend recommended Hogan because her little brother attends the high school as a senior. She spoke very highly of Hogan. 
I began doing my research and found out Mayor Sly James attended and graduated class of 1969. This information made my decision very easy. When I enrolled her, COVID-19 just hit. She was home for what would be the longest spring break ever. We did not know what the plan was for the next school year. In September, she started school virtually. I'll be honest with you, I was very skeptical about the online program. In the beginning, the work was very overwhelming. I thought I made a mistake and set her up for failure. Maybe they, her former teachers, were right. Maybe she wasn't ready for middle school. I made a schedule for her to follow. It made the work easy, easier, and we got the hang of it. Things got better. Complete 180. She's thriving and actually loves learning. Her teachers are great. If she needs help with anything, it's very easy for her to ask and receive the help, and she actually understands. So far, I see improvement in her academically, especially in her reading and math. I also see the change in her socially. The virtual program that they have in place requires her to be more responsible for her own education in a sense by having to contact the teachers to ask questions and making sure she's completing all assignments on time, preparing for her college, preparing her for college. In closing, I would recommend Hogan Charter School because overall, my child seems happier about learning. Signed, Ronice Simmons, mother of London Simmons, sixth grade. Thanks for the opportunity to share. Thank you. Next up, we have Dr. Alexis Petrie. Hi, thank you for the opportunity to address this group. I served on the Hogan board um, during many of the years, um, 11 years in um, two different segments. So I saw a lot of the change. I saw the building and I saw the decline. And I want to um, say how very proud I am, even though I left the board in 2019. Um, I am so proud of where Hogan is today. I think that Hogan provides a, a very important anchor to the communities where, um, where students and families live and don't have a strong community anchor. There's not much there. And the Hogan schools help keep those um, communities along with churches and other things um, thriving and give people a place to, to associate with. I think that in many ways the, the charter schools have lined up more to the West and I'm proud that Hogan works to keep its charter schools in the neighborhoods that it serves. Um, even though it's difficult to find buildings and it's difficult um, to, to make all of that work, they stand by their convictions and um, they truly care and serve not just the students, but the whole family and the community. And I think that having Hogan as part of Kansas City's urban education is an incredible blessing and gift. And as a taxpayer, um, I'm grateful for the turnaround that I've seen in Hogan as um, someone who lives um, near Hogan. I'm really proud uh, that part of my taxes go to support this fine school district. And I'm also incredibly um, proud that Hogan's back on track. Thank you for letting me talk. Thank you. We will now hear from Latoya Wallace. Um, good evening. I'm one of the moms at Hogan. I have two in the high school and one in the middle school. And we live in one of the zip codes that uh, Mr. Strickland was talking about. So in our areas, a lot of schools have closed. 
So as we jumped around schools with our children, we ended them up at Hogan. And Hogan is the only one who provided hope for our children. Our children at other schools seemed to fail and the, they really didn't care. But when we got to Hogan, a lot of the Hogan staff showed concern. They were supportive and they also helped our kids thrive. So I'm not surprised that he put that up about pulling the greatest potential out of the children because my son now, he was very into himself. He didn't really speak to other people. And now he is one of the most open children that there is. And so they get also give the children support of coming from hard neighborhoods that they don't have to end up like that or they don't have to do what they see around them. They give them hope and help them to graduate and be better for themselves. Great, thank you so much. Next, we will hear from Jonathan Cullen. All right, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, I'm a former graduate of Hogan Prep. I actually graduated in 2002. I'm also a uh, SPED teacher here at the high school and assistant football coach. Um, I will say Hogan has historically uh, been a school that has provided opportunities for children um, from the same zip code that Dr. Strickland spoke about. I'm from that same zip code. Couldn't see beyond my block, couldn't see beyond where I was headed. But when I came to Hogan, met Coach Escola, um, and I graduated from college. I uh, just received my master's. Um, and again, I have the opportunity to impact kids um, on a mental level where they're not getting that at home and at school. Academically, um, the pieces and the teachers we have in place are um, highly impactful. And I really mean that highly impactful for our kids in both the SPED department and both general, general ed. So I can not say Hogan has continued to grow uh, tremendously. And again, just being a young man or I'm an older man now, um, that's from uh, the same zip code Dr. Strickland just spoke about. Look at me, I'm a prime example. So Hogan can help elevate kids to the next level. I mean, we are doing really great things here. And I'm not just saying that because I work here, but I truly mean that being an alum and just seeing the effects that it's taken over the years. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Next, we will hear from Mary Esselman. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to share this evening. I'm Mary Esselman. I'm the CEO at Operation Breakthrough. And we're, I'm going to talk about three points tonight about why I think Hogan is truly making a difference in continuing the education for their students. Um, first, we're entrusted with that first year of learning for Hogan's youngest learners. We actually run two pre-K classrooms um, that then rise into the kindergarten at Hogan. And I really think that Hogan was ahead of the curve on this. A year before the early learning cooperative was formed in Kansas City, Hogan worked with us to try to find a way that they could get their kindergarten students a pre-K experience. And having looked at the data for the first two cohorts of children, you know, we see what the data would have looked like if they hadn't had preschool. And most of the children had very little readiness across any of the indicators um, for kindergarten readiness. And so knowing that they needed that year so their teachers could actually be teaching kindergarten content instead of having to go back through and rebuild all those early readiness skills from not only the academic side, but social emotional. And so I think that shows huge promise, not only for the leadership, but also for the young children that will be matriculating through the school. The second thing I wanna talk about is just their commitment to the whole child. Um, as we look at the children who are at Hogan, Hogan really makes a concerted effort to really meet children where they are, to make sure that they can really meet that potential both academically and then socially emotionally. We've seen multiple examples and we work with 29 different schools and oftentimes when children are struggling, there might be a tendency to try to kind of push them along to the next school so that you can really focus on the children that are there. And they really make every effort to try to work with children. Um, I can think of two examples um, in the last year where children, a family 
had lost a sibling to homicide and a parent. And the school really worked through those peaks and valleys to make sure those children could stay and be successful. And the last thing I wanna talk about is, is their willingness to partner in the community. You know, we saw the group of children that we served really struggling last year on the bus and it was resulting in suspensions when they got to school. And we found a way, um, Hogan found a way actually, to find a way for, for us to bus the children so we could have a monitor, we could do it efficiently and effectively. And after that, we saw no suspensions for the children. So they were able to enter school in a self-regulated manner. Um, Next thing was in terms of the kindergarten. The kindergarten teachers were partnering with the early education teachers and also the kindergarten teacher even came and taught summer school for a seamless transition for the kids as they moved into kindergarten. And last, most recently, I was super excited about the basketball coach that, that um, coaches the middle school. He actually spent um, I don't know if it was two days or three days kind of saying guys were in this together instead of practice they had tutoring reminding them that they had to be strong academically as well as strong on the court and I think those three reasons really show um, why I'm proud to be a partner of Hogan and, and why I believe that um, their charter should be renewed and I strongly endorse them. Thank you. Thank you. Now we will hear from Kevin Patterson. Maybe. If not, then we will move on to Dr. Cynthia Lane. I think he's trying to talk. Oh, let me try again. He's, Can you hear me now? There we yep. go. Thank okay. you. Uh, thank you. My name is uh, Kevin Patterson. My son is Kevin Patterson Jr. Um, right now, because of Hogan, He's going to graduate from the United States Marine mm. uh, Corps boot camp January 15th. Yeah. And he has some very challenging times. He challenged the school. He, he comes from a two family home. Uh, both of us are educated and, and we're educators. Um, the staff really worked with him. He never really reached his potential until he actually got out of school. He put things together. Uh, he's a leader in the Marine Corps right now. And I really appreciate everything from the superintendent to Mr. Wright and the staff, the coaches at Hogan. And my son started there uh, in middle school and he had been in three other schools before then. This was the first school he stayed in and completed and finished, which made me proud of him. But I really respect the staff um, for the patience and the love that they show my son because he was very challenging to them. And, and so I, I, I like to see that charter continue. Uh, a lot of the kids that he went to school with or in college now, some of his best friends were playing ball. Some of them are just going to school. So I see a lot of great positive things happening from at Hogan. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next up, we will hear from Dr. Cynthia Lane. Thank you, everyone, and, and good evening. Um, I am Cindy Lane, and um, I have the privilege of supporting Hogan as a leadership coach that works with the board and thinks about system transformation. But I have to tell you, just listening to the testimonies that have come before tonight, I am inspired and so hopeful for the bright future of this school and the impact it, it is having on our young people in the community. So thanks very much for the opportunity to, to be part of this testimony and to share a little bit of perspective from, from perhaps the systems transformation level. I have spent um, nearly 40 years, it's hard for me to in the field of education. And the passion that has always been driving my work is the opportunity gap. As you all have already clearly articulated, it's not that our kids don't have potential, it's that they have not had the opportunities to access the kind of resources and supports that they need to see that bright future for themselves. So that's really what brings me here tonight, and that's what has brought me into the work at Hogan, this desire to help the board and the leadership redesign a system that truly transforms 
pathways and opens doors for kids. And the openness of the board, the openness of the administration to shine a light on the challenges that they faced and to ask the question, what can we do, has certainly been um, encouraging and invigorating. There are four uh, important factors that, from my perspective that I see that are in place today at Hogan that perhaps were not just a few short years ago. Number one, strong board leadership. Today's Hogan board is engaged, they're experienced, they're strategic, and they are certainly determined. The second would be a forward-thinking administration. And you can hear that in Dr. Strickland's passion behind why he's doing this work. It is not simply to uh, improve uh, academic outcomes for kids, although that is vitally important. It's frankly about transforming opportunity and lives for kids. The third is the engaged and talented staff. I've had the opportunity to work with building staff and system level staff. And this is a group of individuals who are committed, who are determined to do, frankly, and this is true, whatever it takes to make sure that every classroom has a talented teacher and they're supported with the curriculum and the resources and the partnerships they need to help our kids succeed. And then the fourth area would be accountability. You know, oftentimes in school systems and, and frankly other organizations, uh, people don't want to talk about the challenges that they face. They, they tend to just want to move past them. But I have seen this board and this administration shine a light on the challenges and then strategically put plans in place that will help the Hogan system move forward. Um, as I think about this group of leaders, um, they know that best intentions are not going to get our kids to where they need to be. So instead, they've been strategic and deliberate, and they're aligning the entire system around that overarching goal of graduating each student with their competitive advantage. Um, so I just want to say that what strikes me most is the boldness of this group's strategic plan. Hogan is daring to say that each and every student will graduate with a high school diploma and more than that, critical assets that open doors like early college, like industry recognized credentials, like client experiences. And they're daring to say, we're gonna start talking about that in kindergarten with kids and families so that the families are truly a part of the student's transformation experience. So I believe that we all recognize there's, there's much more that needs to be done and the community needs to rally around Hogan to help with the success. But a light has been illuminated on their strengths and the challenges. There's now an in-depth examination that's been complete and the board has put an aligned plan in place. I think Hogan's on a great trajectory to succeed. And let me just say that I think we can all say with confidence, the preparatory is now put back in the main Hogan Preparatory Academy. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be here tonight. Thank you. We will now hear from Ebony Williams. Yes. Hello. Okay. I'm sorry. My phone. Um. It was. All right. Hello. My name is Ebony Williams. My son's name is JB Williams, and he's a kindergartner at um, Hogan Elementary. Um. So I'm fairly new to Kansas City. So picking a school was um a little difficult for me because I wasn't really sure where to send. Um. I wasn't really sure where to send my son, um, but I do have two nephews and a niece that um, attend uh, uh, that attend Hogan, and they love your school. So my son, of course, wants to go to school where his cousins go to because they talk about Hogan all the time. Um, and I'm really glad that um, I chose Hogan. Um, specifically because of the help that you guys do um, just for the families and just for the families in general. Um, I will tell you a little bit. Um, I've kind of struggled the last few months because I've been in and out of the hospital, um, which with me being a single parent and I don't really have help with my son. So um, us trying to do the virtual schooling and getting used to that. And he's in kindergarten. So he was already really excited to come to school just to have to do it on the screen now. So just getting him engaged in the learning, doing it this way. Um, I really want to take my hats off to his kindergarten teacher, Ms. Tatum, um, because one thing she does is she, and she does it so well is keep the kids engaged um, to where they want to come on 
on the screen she she makes she makes it where they want to come on and learn like he he's excited to get on the first thing hi miss tatum like he, he he gets very excited for that and it's already hard enough to have these kids um interested in doing spoon this way in the first place especially when you have like a kindergartner who was ready to get on the bus and get on come to school and be in a classroom setting so um just trying to get him un to understand that um, we have to do things this way it's been hard enough but she makes it really 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 um easy um she's also very good at just um the follow-up because sometimes we have teachers who will come and they'll teach and they won't care about anything that happens afterwards but the follow-up that comes along with the teachers that come that comes along with the virtual and just everything up is is amazing again um i was really sick and in and out the hospital and then um right after i got better i had covid and so i wasn't able to go and i wasn't able to go anywhere or do anything and so it was kind of a, a rough two months for me and my son but i had people who were willing to drop us off lunches um just because i wasn't able to get to the store so those extra food boxes that we're getting for the kids right now like food, Things like that, like it's something that in the time of need for me it was really important to have somebody just be there and actually and the extra help and support. It was really important, and I didn't have to, I didn't have to do too much to get that support. I didn't have to beg. I didn't have to ask for too much. I didn't have to do anything. It was just something that was offered to me, and that's really important to me and and where I choose to place my son because his education is important to me. So to have to know that he's learning everything that he needs to learn, um, and then just have other people around to just help care for him. Um, and help kind of be that little village when you don't have a village and you're away from family and loved ones. And it's just really helpful. So I love Hogan. I appreciate Hogan. And um, I hope it's something that you guys just continue to keep on coming because my son's in kindergarten and I plan on being here for a while. So we plan on growing up in Hogan. So uh, just thank you. And um, thank you for giving me the chance and opportunity just to speak on our behalf today. Thank you. Thank you. And just a reminder to try and keep your comments under two minutes. We are almost halfway through and we are just trying to get through everyone. So appreciate that. And next up we have Susan Wally. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity to speak on behalf of Hogan Preparatory Academy. I'm Susan Wally. I'm the president and CEO of Prep KC. We're a 15 year old organization that works with our most challenged school districts in the heart of Kansas City, five Missouri side districts, four charter schools. And we focus on uh, helping the schools actually attain the results for their students that they envision. And it's so inspiring every time I talk with Dr. Strickland, with Jason Strickland, to hear how he and his team articulate their vision for their children. Um, is always inspiring. Um, and that's one of the reasons Prep KC has been drawn to the opportunity to work with Hogan Preparatory Academy for the last two years. Uh, we look pretty hard at the places that we put our resources when we invest our time, our strategic consultation, our professional development, um, and our, our energies. And there are two things that stand out whenever we make a decision to work with a school. One is, the kind of leadership that not only has the vision for the school and the system that the leaders want to produce, but they have the experience and capacity to really produce those results. And we really see that in the Hogan team and, um, and are excited about working be with this team. Uh, the other uh, asset is the passion for a student-centered culture. And you heard Dr. Strickland and you would hear Eddie Wright, the high school principal and other leaders talk about how important it is to put students at the center and to, to be there, whatever it takes to help students accomplish outcomes. Our specialty at Prep KC as a partner at Hogan has been to help them attain um, those market value assets for their graduates. The idea that every student can graduate not only with a high school diploma, but with additional assets that gives her or gives him the opportunity to move on to post-secondary education, to move into um, a career and into the workforce um, in the ways they want to be able to do because they have had the preparation through their entire K-12 system. So I'm um, thrilled to be in a partnership with Hogan. Um, looking forward to the continued growth of the results they're going to create. We, we keep a lot of data and we track a lot of data. The trend lines that are starting to appear because of the initial work that this leadership team is doing 
are impressive and we just can't wait to continue to support the work in the future. So I'm a strong advocate for the, um, for the continued support that this commission could give to Hogan Preparatory Academy. Thank you. And next we have Awas Sufi. Thank you. Um, you know, it, <laughs> this uh, virtual environment is sort of sad to me because, uh, you know, I, I've seen the, the journey that, that we help support Hogan get through with all of the folks on this call. It's, it's quite extraordinary to me. And I'm, uh, maybe I should introduce myself. I'm Awas Sufi. I'm the CEO of uh, School Smart Kansas City. We are a collaborative philanthropic fund in Kansas City that supports uh, schools um, and school improvement. Um, one of the really challenging things that happens to us is that every now and then folks come our way and talk to us about um, the difficult straits that a school is in. And in particular for this school, uh, folks on this call uh, came over to me at different moments three, four years ago now and said, we're in trouble here. Uh, there are financial challenges, operational mismanagement, uh, potential compliance challenges, uh, all sorts of things that were unfolding that were putting this school in a very precarious position. Um, the thing that was heartening was to see the focus and purpose that the governing board, that the key leadership was taking and saying, this was not right, that this was not a place um, that, you know, that this was not a place the school could remain. Um, and something dramatic needed to happen. Um, and in that vantage point, they had come to us to say, you know, pretty much, you know, as Dr. Strickland noted, this community deserves better. Uh, the folks in the community um, um, and the rich tradition of this school uh, should be honored with something much better. Um, and that put us on an amazing journey over the course of, you know, two, three years at this point, um, where first and foremost, uh, we worked very closely with the school to identify the financial challenges, to look at the operational issues, to look at essentially the, 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 the pieces of the puzzle that needed to be restructured and reframed to establish a stable operating base from which to grow and build. And anyone that works in school improvement or school turnaround, I should say, um, at some level, we're all kind of delusional. It's really hard work. Uh, it's incredibly tough. Uh, but you've got to set those pieces in place to then build from. And I have to just say enormous kudos to that team, to the governing board, to the, you know, to the leadership group, to put doing the right things to get them in that position. Um, we then had the enormous pleasure at School Smart to host Jason Strickland, Dr. Strickland, as a uh, leadership fellow uh, so that he could really conduct the diligence that was appropriate to see whether or not this school was something uh, worthy of really jumping in for him professionally and to then build the type of team that is quite extraordinary. Uh, and I do hope the commission has an opportunity to really look and see what they've done from top to bottom, have rebuilt the team, have done it with extraordinary folks, and they're incredibly well positioned for the future. And with that team in place, and this is not easy work, I don't think anybody that does this uh, regularly could, 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 could disagree, um, we're in the position now where this team is rebuilding culture, it's rebuilding academic rigor, it's positioning kids and students and families and communities around them toward that amazing potential that they have. And we've just been delighted to support the school along this journey. Uh, and, you know, we are ready to continue to support them as they move even further down the path. So thank you for the opportunity to provide comment and, and to support the, the renewal of uh, the school uh, by the commission. Thank you. And next up, we will hear from Dr. Jennifer Waddell. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for the opportunity to be here. Um, I am the director of our Institute for Urban Education at UMKC. I also chair the uh, Division of Teacher Education and Curriculum Studies with a specific focus on preparing future teachers. Um, I'd like to start off by co commending Dr. Strickland and his team for the tremendous progress that they've made over the 19 months since Dr. Strickland was named superintendent. Um, worth noting that 10 of these 19 months, we've been in a global pandemic. Um, and over the last year specifically, the relationship between UMKC School of Education and Hogan Preparatory Academy has been reestablished. There were about five years there that we were not able to work with Hogan for various reasons that have been alluded to on this call. 
Um, but we now work with Hogan Elementary for internship and practicum experiences for our students in which our free service teachers are observing positive classroom environments, responsive teaching, and effective instruction. We are also currently in the process of collaborating with the district for student teaching and practicum placements at all levels. I'm also excited to share that Hogan was one of five high schools selected to participate in the Institute for Urban Education's Grow Your Own Teacher Pipeline program that launched in the fall of 2020. And this program aligns with the real world and dual credit experiences that Dr. Strickland spoke of this evening. In our experiences with Hogan over the past year, we've observed teachers and leaders who are committed to educational equity and social justice, committed to college and workforce readiness, and who are willing to make very difficult decisions for the best interest of their students. So I'm excited to report that the partnership between UMKC School of Education and Hogan has been restored and we are in full support of their application for renewal. Thank you. Thank you. And if Brianna Dean is on this uh, phone or on the Zoom call, I will now unmute her. I believe she's one of these numbers, so. Hi, this is Ms. Lemon. Uh, Brianna Dean is the parent of Lauren Dean. Um, and I believe Lauren Dean was planning to speak if she's on the call. I'm not seeing her, but um, if you are on the call, just let me know in the chat and then I will try and get to you. Um, in the meantime, we will hear from Gus Jacobs. Thank you. Uh, certainly this has been one of the most inspiring things I've done for a while is to listen to the testimony that we've heard this evening. I'll make a couple brief points. Uh, first of all, uh, I've been around Hogan Prep for a number of years, and I, I so I turn Hogan her term Hogan Preparatory Academy is kind of the new Hogan Prep over the last couple of years. Two points: number one, I'm excited about the new leadership, uh, both at the building and district level. Uh, I think it'll serve it well and gives me great hope for the future. Dr. Strickland, I believe, is a premier urban educator, and is passionate about his vision for taking Hogan into the future. I work in leadership development at UMKC uh, and uh, two of the building administrators that are now uh, in Hogan, I had the privilege of having them within the last few years in several of their classes and administrative preparation. These two individuals were in the top 10% of all students I taught in my 22 years at UMKC. Uh, they are having and will continue to have a significant impact on, on Hogan and the success that uh, their students will have. The second point I will make is that I believe Hogan Prep provides a needed school, needed high school in Kansas City. Uh, other charter high schools seem to filter students out, not Hogan. Hogan serves the students who come, no matter their educational needs, as a public school should do. I'm a big advocate of the work that's going on with the team there, and certainly I'm in agreement with much of what I've heard this evening and have really been inspired by the uh, parents that have spoken to us. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we will hear from Sean Stalling. I'm, I'm not, am I good now? Yep, we can hear you. All right, good evening uh, to all. Uh, Sean Stalling, I'm the executive director at De La Salle uh, Education Center. And we are another high school uh, in Kansas City that spends a lot of time watching Hogan, learning from Hogan, uh, and being inspired by Hogan. And so I just wanted to say and capture a couple of things, and I promise I, I'll try to stay within my two minutes. Um, there's two, there's three things that kind of stuck with me in listening to folks talk. And I, I agree, I had them written down. Hope, expectations, and support. Those are like the three things that I that I feel when I talk to Dr. Strickland, Strickland when I talk to Eddie Wright, or when I talk to Dr. Burns, or when I talk to Jamie, there's this sense of hope, expectations, and support that I know that the students and families at Hogan are getting. Hogan is honestly professional. Uh, they talk honestly about their gaps, their ideas, their strategies, their struggles, and their resources. And for that, that's what we need in our communities. They're also committed partners. So we know that when we work with Hogan as a school, that is truly a learning community with them. 
uh, and that the thought effort uh, and the, the struggles that we have as professionals are really going to be elevated through that partnership. And then we also realize that we both really deeply care about children. Um, and then a couple final thoughts. It's just that there's a philosophy that, that I get from Hogan and it resonates with me personal, personally. There's this high expectation for children. If you spend five minutes talking to Jason or to Eddie Wright, you know that there's expectations there that just go off the chart. You also know that kids are gonna be supported and families are gonna be supported. We've heard that through parents tonight. But then finally, the third piece is we also know that in no circumstance and no reality will Hogan give up on those children. And so that whole idea, you put all that together that you have a community that holds kids high expectations that give them support and will not give up on them. And then wants to give them a competitive advantage. That's a, that's a win all the way around. So I wanna say that I'm in full support of it. Hogan can't get go anywhere because personally, I need Dr. Strickland in my life. He's part of the reason I'm even in Kansas City. So I wanna give a thumbs up and say that De La Salle stands in full support of the chartering and rechartering of Hogan, Hogan Prep. Thank you. And we only have a few minutes left, so we're going to try and get through as many people as possible. Uh, we have Shauna uh, Stefanczyk. Yes. Hello. My name is Shauna Stefanczyk. I'm an educational consultant that works with Hogan Prep. Thank you for letting me be here this evening. Um, I have been hired this year to work with Dr. Burns' team to support professional learning community work um, with collaboration with administrators, instructional coaches. Um, and I'm here tonight because I would like to recommend Hogan Preparatory Academy Charter for Renewal. During my time as a consultant with them, I, as everyone on this call has mentioned, have discovered the large leadership capacity at Central Office. And I firmly believe that this leadership team can steward the type of vision and change that they're seeking with their future plans of personalized learning and real world, real world experiences with their students. Um, over my time with them, I have helped oversee firsthand the collaboration and the curriculum and assessment shifts K through eight in social studies and ELA. And I've seen the work in math and science and I know and believe strongly it will provide a foundation um, that not only will help students get their core competencies that is also state aligned and has the rigor that will prepare them to improve on their state assessment scores. In addition, I've seen some of the shifts as um, others have talked about. Dr. Lane mentioned the systems and the structures. They're really working to improve those systems um, through their building leaders and instructional coaches. And I think the shift of the learning culture for all the ad adults, um, developing more collaborative teams that are problem solving and ideating and learning together are really gonna help and support the instructional shifts that need to occur in their new model. Um, as a consultant, I personally think it's critical that district and building leaders are at the forefront of the professional learning and developing a culture of shared leadership, and I see them doing that with their staff. And during my time with them on many PLC calls with teachers, I've observed some of the most passionate, dedicated, and caring teachers who have a strong belief in the academic capabilities of Hogan students. Um, in my work, you can't coach a, te coach a teacher to love and have passion, um, and in this environment, I have seen teachers see their students, believe in their students, and helps them their students see the value in education. And it's because of that, that um, the strong leadership, the academic success with the foundation of their curriculum and assessment that I would recommend Hogan for renewal. Thank you so much. With that being said, that we will now close the public comment portion of tonight's hearing. If we did not get to you, I apologize, but you can still uh, either leave your comment in the chat here or email it to info at mcpsc.mo.gov. We will take a five minute break and resume at 6 p.m. with the board meeting. Thank you all.
All right, it is now 6 p.m. So we will begin the board interview. And with that, I will turn it over to Delbert. Are you with us, Delbert? Bailey, he had to go to another meeting. Susan oh. Cole is okay. with us this evening from our um, commission and she'll moderate this part. Sorry for the last minute. Oh, no Bailey, problem. All the way. Hi, Bailey. Hello. I'm ready anytime you are. Yeah, so if you want to begin um, with the board interview, um, take it away. Okay, thanks. Good evening. It's great to see all of you, although I can't see all of you. Uh, let me just tell you from the very beginning that we, we have some questions that we'd like to uh, address to you, but um, I wonder if you could introduce the board members to us so that we have some feel for who's there and where you might be. Good evening, Susan. Um, allow me to my name is Matt Sampson. I am the board chair. I have uh, been with Hogan Prep uh, on their board since 2017. Uh, and I uh, have the pleasure of introducing uh, our board to you and to everybody else this evening. First, uh, first up, I would like to introduce you to Lynn Beaver. Hi, Lynn. I see you there. Uh, you're mute. I am. I think, uh, I think Lynn's muted. She's oh. speaking. Okay. Or trying to. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> well, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I did not unmute myself. Um, I'm Lynn Beaver, and I've been associated with Hogan for about 15 years, and I have been on the board since June of 2016 and um, have um, had the pleasure of going through this transition with um, this board and um, have been uh, impressed with um, all the things that we're doing. So I'm very glad to be here tonight. Next up, uh, I'd like to introduce everyone to Robin Carlson. Good evening. I'm Robin Carlson. I am um, a board member since July of 2019. I serve as the secretary of the board. I serve on the governance committee as well. And when I am not a Hogan board member, I am a lawyer here in Kansas City. My um, areas that I primarily work on are commercial, general commercial litigation and employment matters. Thank you, Robin. Uh, next up, I would like to introduce everyone to Dr. Mary Viveros. Uh, good evening. My name's uh, Mary Viveros. I've been on the board just, uh, I guess, about a year and a half. Uh, serve on the academic committee. Uh, I am a retired educator and thrilled to be uh, working with this school and the board itself. So um, thank you. Thank you, Mary. Uh, next up, I would like to uh, introduce everyone to Dave Collier. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Dave Collier. I have been on the board since summer of 2019. I joined uh, shortly after Dr. Strickland uh, came on board. And uh, I am the board treasurer and I serve on the finance committee as well as the uh, charter renewal committee. And uh, I am a corporate attorney. Thank you, Dave. And lastly, I'd like to introduce you to our vice president and also the chairman of the renew our renewal committee, uh, Albert Ray. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, as Matt mentioned, I'm Albert Ray. Uh, grew up in 64130, as was mentioned earlier. So uh, product of the neighborhood, graduated from Kansas State University some years back. Um, I'm a practicing architect. Uh, my firm actually uh, that I work for works for um, and so focuses on educational uh, facility. So um, this strikes me in a number, a chord in a number of different ways. So um, my role this evening is to really work in tandem with our committees, um, finance, academic, board governance, and then the Charter Renewal Committee to, uh, to answer questions as they're presented this evening. Uh, 
So we look forward to the opportunity. Is that everybody, Matt? That's everyone, Susan. Okay. Do you have something else you'd like to say to us at this point, or would you like for us to proceed? Um, I think we're ready for uh, for questions. Uh, anything that you or the rest of the commission wants to ask, we're uh, ready to go. And um, like I said, Albert uh, will, you know, kind of take, you know, you can just ask him as well, uh, being that he is in charge of our uh, renewal sure. committee. Great. Um, we're going to have a series of questions for you. Um, and it's awkward doing this virtually because uh, two people may want to ask, answer, or one person, or yet I, I'm going to suggest, Matt, that you uh, try to keep people from stepping on each other if you can, but it doesn't matter. We understand we're scattered all over the country, so uh, we know that you're not all sitting in the same room and can't make eye contact, so no, no problem. Um, and your understanding of the proceeding tonight is what? That, um, that obviously that you included that you and the rest of uh, your commissioners will have an opportunity to ask us uh, being the board, any questions you might have. Um, and we are ready to, uh, you know, answer whatever you wish. Okay, that's great. We, yes, we will. And uh, after this closes tonight, we of course meet tomorrow, at which point we'll have a vote regarding the proceedings of tonight and everything else we review, reviewed about your school. You, you guys are all clear about that? Yes. Yes, okay. ma'am. Great. Well, Bailey's back there in the background, even though you don't really see her. So she's she's keeping an eye on all of us so we don't go off into cyberspace somewhere. So <laughs> hopefully we can keep this going for another uh, 45, 50 minutes and uh, converse together. Um, you are going to be hearing from, I'm, I'm on the commission and have been on the commission a very, very long time. <clears throat> and I... Uh, I'm really pleased to be dealing with Hogan because back in the very beginning of Hogan, when it went from what it was to a charter school, I was working at the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education and somebody had handed me charter schools, a thing that was very, very strange at that point. But Hogan was one of the first ones that I had any dealings with at all. So I have some history with you all, even though I'm certainly no longer there and haven't been there for a long time, but you're not, you're not foreign to me. So I'm glad to do this with you guys tonight. You'll also be hearing from Peggy Taylor. And again, Peggy's uh, far and wide. She's, uh, Peggy, are you with us? Uh-oh. <laughs> Let me see if I can get a response from her. Peggy? I don't see her on the call unless she's under another name. Yeah, I'm she's sure. muted. She's the oh. 417 number, Bailey. Okay. Okay. Do you think she can hear me, Robin? I do. Okay. Okay. If she can hear me, that's fine. And um, Kathy Jo Loy, also. Kathy Jo, are you there? I am here, oh, finally. Great. And there she <laughs> is, there she is. And of course, uh, Robin is on the call as is uh, Martha McGeehan, uh, the deputy director uh, for the commission. Um, we're gonna ask you questions that you can funnel off to each other or the person that is the most comfortable answering, go right ahead. If you have questions in the middle of us, we'll try to do the best we can. So. Uh, I'm going to start off here, uh, since I do have a little bit of understanding about your history, and it has a long history in this community, but um, the historical academic outcomes have been pretty poor. Why do you think that this charter term is going to be any different than what we've observed? Make sure I'm unmuted here before I start talking. Um, you, you know, I, I think the one thing is is just, you know, Hogan's been there for, I'll start, and I certainly will volley to others that want to contribute here. Um, I mean, the why is um, the kids deserve it. The students deserve it. Um, the board has, um, and the leadership has taken great steps to reorganize itself 
to, as we'll probably talk about this evening, talk about different sponsors, all of that in efforts to step up our own rigor and our own accountability uh, to, to delivering for the community and delivering for the students. Uh, I'm sure there's some academic things. I don't know, Mary, if you want to uh, contribute to that as well or? Sure, um, I'd love to. And I, I really appreciate the question. I think it's the key, uh, the key issue here. And it really is why I'm engaged. Um, as I am and enjoying it. Uh, there, there's, it's hard to look at the scores and the academic outcomes um, at this point. What I am very optimistic about is the infrastructure that's in place that I can see is gonna allow change to happen. Uh, there is high quality leadership, we've heard that. Um, I am very happy with the core issues that I've, one of the consultants explained is the quality of kind of the growth mindset, the professional development, uh, what people have in place to start to initiate those changes. Um, I think it was the Missouri Commission of Public Schools that did a, an assessment and realized that we are not yet where we need to be in classroom instruction, classroom expectations but we are where we need to be with professional development, with leadership, and with the kind of growth mindset that's necessary. So the things have been put in place, good goals that are gonna uh, cause us to be accountable to uh, incremental academic growth, along with good leadership, along with strong professional development, and then of course, great kids for whom we're all, we, that's why people show up. So I'm excited about it, but it is a challenge. And uh, I think it's a challenge that this whole team is up for. Thank you. Anyone else need to weigh in on that question? It's kind of a weighty question. I, I realize I, I started off with one that's uh, a little heavy, but I, I think as you said, I think it's really an important one. Um, and there is a great deal of history to this school. And I'm glad to see that you're looking forward. That's that's a wonderful, wonderful answer. Commissioners, I anytime you're ready to with a question, I can't I can't see I can see you, Kathy Joe. Mm -hmm. I do have a question. Uh, you talked a little bit about the professional development. And I'm sorry because I came in late. Maybe you discussed this already. No, but no, up to date. Okay, then um, on, on that, with the, with the teachers and the staffing that you have, do you feel that they're on board for this new vision to really buckle down and see um, this to fruition? Are, are they discouraged? How, where do you feel the teachers are in this? Or the staff? The... Mary, you want to lead off, or I know Mary and Lynn are kind of, intertwined with this this realm of things. Sure, I, I'll jump in and then Lynn, if you want to, uh, uh, Lynn, I'll hand it to you. So yes, I think uh, actually I'm thrilled that the kind of teachers that are um, in place at Hogan Prep, you know, elementary all the way up, um, are have that growth mindset. Uh, they participate in professional development communities or, you know, PLCs, uh, professional learning communities. Uh, they're beginning to be real data focused. Uh, they are excited about the work and the growth. They've always been, you can tell there's a huge heart for the kids. I frankly think they're struggling. Everybody's struggling a little bit right now with the distance learning. Um, I don't think that's anybody's favorite, but I think they're more than excited to get past this pandemic phase and get to where they can get back with kids face to face. So yeah, I think they're ready. They're ready and they've got leaders to take them where they need to go. Uh, Lynn, I don't know if you wanna uh, add something. Well, I just think also, if you even want to go up another step, I think their relationship that they have built with the superintendent, I think Dr. Right. Strickland has chosen wonderful principles. I think the principles, um, again, um, um, go down and have good relationships with their teachers. But I think that relationship between the administration and the principals and the teachers is a really important thing. And I think Dr. Strickland has really stressed that um, for them. And I think that is the one thing um, you can tell that they're all, we are, that we're all on the same page. I mean, there is a communication and a transparency that just was not there before, you know, that is present here. Um, me being on the board for 
quite a bit of time, um, that transparency was not present and it is, it is there throughout the administration and throughout the teachers and the, and the principals, so. Thank you. Peggy, can you hear us? Not yet. Susan, I'm texting with her now. Bailey, can you unmute the 417 number? Yes, I have asked her to unmute a couple of times now, and I think she either has to accept it, but she should also be able to unmute herself. So I'm not sure what the issue is. I apologize to the board for this. It's all right. Technology glitch. Uh, Peggy's in a remote location tonight. So, <laughs> and I, I will give her a second, see if she gets on here. But meanwhile, let me let me just start with another question because there's we don't have all that much time this evening. Finances uh, for you guys have been a problem for the organization. I think you'd admit to that. Can you talk about what you've done to ensure that it's not going to be a problem again? Yeah, and I'll, I'll, I'll one will volley that to uh, to Dave Collier, our uh, treasurer, and who's also really a key part of our finance committee. You know, a lot of that certainly will just start with. Um, you know, enrollment and, and the fact that the financial picture is certainly vacillating just between, you know, how monies are coming in and attendance. So, the, of course, the uh, retention strategy will be a key part of that. But I'll let Dave kind of talk about the, the financial picture, as you've asked. Dave, you're on. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Albert. And thank you, Susan. Uh, you know, as directors uh, for the charter school, financial oversight is, is one of our key responsibilities and duties. And to your point, historically, there was clearly a lack of transparency. And what resulted from that was some, you know, fairly significant financial issues. And in order just to kind of paint a better picture now in terms of how we view the level of accountability to ensure that our directors are fully informed and aware of the current financial situation, uh, it really began before, you know, well before I joined the board, when Hogan engaged EdOps to really bring in expert advice from the outside into a holistic review and uh, <clears throat> excuse me and plan to essentially write the house in terms of finances. And currently, we, we continue to engage in EdOps, and we've really tried to develop a, a fairly all-encompassing system that involves uh, monthly meetings of the finance committee, uh, which includes myself, the CFO. Um, the, the superintendent, as well as uh, representatives from EdOps to do a really uh, you know, deep dive, both budgeting uh, current uh, expenses uh, for, the, for the prior month, current revenues, as well as forecasting and how our, our forecast is comparing with budget. Uh, we also focus on KPIs and report on those regularly to the entire board of directors. And, and to that note, what we try to ensure is a full financial disclosure and report to the board each month, uh, reporting on the KPIs, the monthly financials, and other key issues that they need to be aware of, again, so they have the opportunity to review and ask questions. And it's the combination of that, uh, plus working closely on my end as the board treasurer with the administration to, to really um, you know, ensure that the appropriate oversight and accountability Finances are a very uh, important discussion and kind of a heavy question. Is there anybody else that would like to, Dave did a fine job, but anybody else want to weigh in on the money issue? Well, I, I mean, I guess the only thing I would say in terms of just resources moving forward is that, you know, I think the board's charge is to really work with the administration to see that, that uh, resources match the goals and the priorities that we've set too, that that we're making sure that we're handling those goals and we're really working with the priorities and budgeting uh, accordingly. You know what, Albert, I'm pretty sure goals are going to come up in the questioning tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they will. <laughs> Very good if you could bring that up. <laughs> do, we have, do we have any contact at all with Peggy at this point? I've been uh, texting with her. She's just, she's going to drop off and try to come back in and see if that works. Okay. Um, That's fine. We'll, we'll move on. 
Kathy, you have a question, Kathy Jo? Well, can we, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, let me see. Okay, um, going back to the finances, are you, you talked about the goals. Could you just kind of refresh what that would be? What, what those things are that you see that you're gonna be striving to? Um, I, I feel like Susan's more eloquent about this than I am, but I feel like that's the thing that's really gonna be um, where people are gonna be watching you. And so yeah. what are the goals? Yeah, in, in terms of the, the goals that we outline in our application, we really focus on cash balance and, and fund balance and how we view that changing over the next five years. And I think to put a, 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 an even finer point on it than that, we are currently in a very strong cash position, which you probably saw from our, um, our pro forma budget. And to, to kind of not, not, to, not to go back to the goals point, but the idea of how can we take the cash reserves that we've built up um, through, uh, you know, really, I think just to, just to reiterate a, a, an extremely detailed uh, budgeting process and, and prudent use of, of our resources, um, how can we use that cash reserve in the future to reinvest it in ourselves? And so you'll see in those um, cash and that cash reserve goal uh, that's in our application, an actual dip in cash. And what that's intended to reflect is we, we intend to reinvest that cash into the facilities and then from there execute on a plan to build the cash levels up to where we think it's, it's reasonable. So facilities are part of that. Our facilities are part of that then though? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay. I think that I see a 417 number that might be up here. Peggy, are you there? I am. I have been here since five. It's just trying to get unmuted. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh my gosh. Well, then you you have been pretty much able to hear what we've done. It, it, heard, yes. Okay. I have uh, heard everything. Um, have you I guess my question. Okay, go ahead. If I may ask the question, please. Is I would like to know why did you change sponsors? You know, what are you seeking from us that you couldn't get from your original sponsor? I'll, and I'll kind of start that one off. It was just interesting just coming coming on board um, here just over a year ago and actually just to have an informal discussion with, with Dr. Strickland, just asking him about the, just me trying to learn how to be the best board member I could, was just asking him questions about what was the relationship like and how was it working and kind of how we got, how the group got where they got. And I think just to kind of fast forward, um, the analogy I drew, and he was like, that's exactly it. <laughs> was it, we seemed like we were maybe getting the, we were getting support and a, and a listening ear from our current or our previous sponsor, but really looking to increase the rigor and attentiveness, more of, more of a coaching mindset, more of an aggressive mindset. And the fact that um, we really wanted to step up our accountability and step up our rigor and really have someone that really kind of exercised the board for say. So, I mean, really, it was just looking at us taking our future into our hands and saying we want someone that's going to push us to be better. And um, I, I'm certainly relinquishing my time to any other board member that wants to contribute there. Can I jump in for this? Yeah, I, would, I, I would echo that. Oh, go ahead, Robin. Sorry. Oh, Robin? <laughs> I'm not sure. Oh. In the process, and you've heard the word transformation. But in the process of really trying to right the ship and turn things around, I think the board also realized it's time to increase the board's accountability. Um, mm -hmm. We know that changing sponsors is not going to be, you know, we're not, we're not pushing an easy button here and we know it. Um, but we do think that it is really important that we have a sponsor that is going to hold our collective arms to the fire if we really want change and transfer. Accountability is a critical piece of moving COVID forward. And Dave, I'll... No, Robin, I think you, you took the words out of my mouth. I think um, when we were initially engaging in this process, we met with with Robin and, and others in, in almost a, a kind of uh, interview process. And the, and the recurring theme again is we, we see the transformation of, of Hogan from being 
uh, top to bottom. And, and part of that analysis included uh, thinking about our current sponsor and about who the right sponsor going forward would be. And, and to echo what, what Robin said, and, and so Albert, um, who brings that, that degree of accountability Very good. Uh, so apparently, from what you're saying to me, is you are very clear about our standard of accountability and the quality that we expect from your school as your sponsor. Crystal yes. clear. Yes. Good, good, good. Uh, I have a second question. I, w I was reading where you feel that as a board, you need to spend more time in uh, your own professional development, which is always money and time well spent so that you're more co cohesive as a board. Can you tell me about your recent self-assessment and how you feel that, that you, uh, you measured up as a board working together? Well, I think the so I'll, I'll certainly re relay this uh, to Robin, who's really kind of helping us or really leading uh, the charge here. But you know, a lot of it is just uh, um, scaling our committees and really being able to dig deeper and understand deeper um, as a group working collectively. But I'll let uh, uh, Robin kind of expand on that question or responding to that question. Sure, I'm happy to, to jump in. So we did the, the self-assessment this fall. We took a look at where the, the strengths were, where some of the weaknesses were. Um, we have, to the extent committees didn't exist, we have created committees. And in those committees, and I had mentioned earlier, I serve on the governance committee. We basically took where the, air, the, the challenges or the areas for growth were and turned those into part of our goals. Um, with the idea that while we also knew we had some very specific goals, we had some things to work on that we didn't want to just get lost. So if you look at the minutes from our meeting, basically what you'll, what you'll see is we, we've got goals set on um, succession planning for the superintendent, succession planning for the board. Um, we have, we are starting to put together a calendar for professional development and training of the board. In fact, the last couple of board meetings, we have set aside a certain amount of time and actually done training for the board that we thought was required. And it is our intent to move forward doing that over time that every board meeting, a portion of that will be some, some training. In addition, we've got a retreat coming up. Um, Dr. Lane is going to partner with us on that to do some additional professional development. So really feel like um, we're, we're trying to make that happen. Did that answer what you wanted to know? It certainly does. It sounds to me like your board is taking on the leadership role. You are the top. You are the top of the leadership, I guess you would say, chain. And definitely what you do professionally as your development and your cohesiveness, learning how to work together as a board is going to trickle down to everything that's done within your building. I'm, I'm very pleased. You're setting yourself up for strong success. Pleased to hear it. Thank you. That, that is our... <laughs> okay, we're a little... Okay, let me... Let me I see this, this goal thing coming up. Uh, so let's let's continue that vein. I told you this would happen once you brought it up. Um, the rate of change in goals is relatively slow when we look at what you've presented to us. Can you tell us why it's not more aggressive? In terms of academic goals? Uh, all of the above. Mm -hmm. But yes, academic. I'll defer to, to, to Mary on that one. Uh, yeah, I think, I think you can hear me. Um, so the, yeah, it is, it's very incremental. Um, and we've discussed the rate of change and actually realized that uh, we probably need to task ourselves with moving faster than we've actually written up. Um, understanding that our initial years might be, uh, 
some of the easiest moves to make as far as um, scores go, but it is it is not overly aggressive. We are there are teams and teachers and people are working together to get their hands around the instructional model, the curriculum expectations with students and actually getting kids caught up. I think one of our most rigorous academic goals is the one that has to do with growth. And it's really our third goal that challenges us the most, which is going to be ensuring that because so many of our kids are behind, we have to ensure that they grow over and above what perhaps uh, a normal growth weight would be. And so in, in beginning, certainly in elementary school, but each of obviously currently our high school students need that as well. And so focusing on accelerating their academic growth so that we can get them to where they need to be. I'll, I'll just be very succinct and offer, I think we can't um, overlook the importance of the personalized learning and the market value asset, what kids will leave with as an opportunity to create a vision for kids who now feel compelled to grow. Don't know if there's anything else I missed or I need to add to that. Anyone else on the board have a follow-up to that or commissioners, another question about the uh, aggressiveness of their design for that? I, I see, I, I, I'm thinking that Peggy's trying to talk and maybe we can't hear her again. Do you think that's possible, Bailey or Robin? Can, can you hear me now? I can now, yes. Okay, I had a question along, um, if the state does not do the assessment, what are you planning to do individually to really gain the knowledge that you need for where your students are now and how you move them forward? Uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll jump right back in here. So um, we're certainly hoping to get that assessment result, whether it counts or not. Could I interrupt just a second? Peggy's on a phone and doesn't see you all. So when you talk, if you'd say, this is... Sure. Thank okay. you. Uh -huh. Thank My name's you. Mary, Mary V. Barrows. Um, and so uh, we're certainly hope to be able to give the assessment this year because we do need that feedback. But I can, uh, the exciting thing is that there are formative assessments in place uh, that are done monthly mm -hmm. that are aligned with the Missouri standards and aligned with the assessments. There's mm -hmm. also um, a more a norm reference test that's given three times a year that also gives us that information back. So we will have feedback on where kids are. Um, but we do want hope to be able to use that state assessment data. And even if it doesn't uh, count um, as it were, mm -hmm. uh, because I know things are unusual right now, uh, we can do our own calculations. We can determine the number of kids below basic. We can determine the MPI scores and we can also discern where kids are with their growth. And so we need that data to determine you know, where we are. Um, are we on track with curriculum? How is the instruction going? We need that kind of information to continue to move forward and help kids grow. I would also like to ask on the longevity of your teaching staff, uh, are you seeing commitment there and not those teachers that are transitioning out and away? Are they supportive with your, your new transformation in this new culture that you're trying to develop? Yeah. Shall I answer or does someone else want it? I can take it. Go for it, Mayor. Yeah, I was thinking it's in the realm of, I guess, yeah. because it's in the realm of probably staff retention um, <clears throat> and staff training. What quick information do you want me to give to April Sutherland for her introduction? Oh, did we lose Mary? I'm here. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. Something else, something else popped up on my screen. I'm yeah. sorry. Um, so uh, actually, uh, there has been a transformation, uh, a lot of change here. Some teachers have left, uh, some teachers have been hired, and uh, it's really good that now there is buy-in among the staff. And so as they look forward with this transformation, um, we really have the right people on board to to use this data to meet together and to make the changes that need to happen. Good, that's critical. Uh, I, I appreciated the parents that did speak, the, the few that did speak 
about the support and the caring of each of the students, uh, that culture will make a huge difference in how those students come to school, their attendance records, and how they perform. If their expectations are high, that will feed right down to the student and what they want to accomplish to please those teachers. I think too that since you all have some Hogan alums involved in the school, that, that makes a huge difference to those kids to see that they came through that experience and are on the other side and are still there trying to help everybody else. That's that's always an enlightening thing and, and something that's rewarding to see, but I think it's awfully good for the kids as well. I agree. Very much so. Agreed. Kathy Jo, you still with us? I am. <laughs> <laughs> Anything occur to you that you'd like to ask? No, I, I just appreciate the, the, the further on the teachers. You know, I really think that, you know, I come from an education family and that, that, that team, players just make a better school, whether it's the administrators or um, the teachers, you know, they really, that just, they just need to be a team. And that's what I'm hoping that I'm seeing, but uh, you know, it makes me nervous when, you know, teachers are leaving and, but maybe they need to, because maybe they, you know, they couldn't be on that team. So um, I mean, I'm excited to what I see. I'm a Kansas city. And so I'm excited wow. to see what Hogan's going to do. <laughs> right. Um, let me ask you, and uh, again, because I, I sort of have a deep history with this school, and I, I, I heard what everybody said tonight on the call. I, I know that uh, there are a lot of people that understand that Hogan's been around for a long time, and it may seem irrelevant that I ask this question, but it's really not. Um, why do you think that Hogan is important to the community and could it could those needs not be served by another charter in the district or in the area? I, well, and I think Dr. Strickland alluded to this earlier. I mean, in terms of the history and understanding it, because I, I do know I, I'm very close friends with uh, students who were part of Bishop Hogan when it was still really associated right. with the diocese and the Catholic Church. Right. Um, um, certainly since it's been a charter school, it's a younger group. But what I can tell you, I've seen um, I've seen just tremendous investment on, on, on the part of some of the coaches and the teachers that that not only are teaching and ed educating, but they're, they're actively promoting their students and the successes of, of students who've actually left the school. They're in college and you have teachers who are tweeting on the great things that those students are doing beyond that where Hogan was the foundation of what, <laughs> you know, they were doing. So um, the, the name is still very important in, in Kansas City, will remain important in Kansas City. Um, in terms of other charter schools, um, Hogan's, Hogan doesn't, Hogan's doors are open to everyone who wants to be a part of the Hogan family. Um, and, and we're very upfront about that. And that's not, you know, I had the, the fortune of being part of, you know, several other charter schools through family members and other things here in the city. But, and um, not all doors are open uh, the way Hogan's are. Um, so I think we have a unique place um, in, in, in the city. Um, in this past and in hope and in its future as well. So others want to contribute there. Uh, if, if I, I'll be succinct. Um, what I will say that Hogan offers and uh, that I don't believe others do is the extremely personalized approach to learning that's coming through the advocates, through the teachers, and also the market value asset. Um, that's that's unique, and so it's going to give students who need the most hope who need the most uh, understanding personalization to overcome the trauma they've lived, they need this school to create a vision at the end and then to assess students all the way through, coach them to where they need to be, provide the instruction, the curriculum, the standards that are necessary, and then incrementally, as fast as we can get them there, get them to where they need to be so that they can see a future that's appropriate for them. Um, and I know others have things to say al along these lines as well. 
Yeah, I think that this last just one sentence is that I probably just neglected. It's just the, that the market value assets that Mary spoke of uh, help the students really um, invest that in their own community. So those those assets can be used right there um, to improve their own lives and their own communities, block by block. What sort of? Uh, um, go ahead. Yes, Peggy. I, I was going to ask, how are you? What is your plans for marketing this yeah. transformation? Your new goals, your your new image that you want to spread across Kansas City to Funny bring thing. back. Yes, just back what I was going to ask. Yeah. Well, I think you know one of the things that that we you know we talk about the the the, the school's mission and, and organization of leaders and educators and producing you know those that contribute community is what's your potential, um, you know the the school is embarking on um, a number of things to uh, to recruit and retain through uh, planning of of uh, improved facilities. The high school is very much a flagship. Of, of the Hogan um, district and the Hogan brand. Um, that is a big priority and, we're, and the, the board and the leadership's excited about um, uh, the possible, you know, the renewal of the school and work on the school. Other board members want to contribute there? I think, um, I think the key word also is brand. I think that, you know, what we're trying yeah. to do is we're, we're establishing a culture that is, um, you know, that everybody needs to, the community, the town, the alumni, everybody needs to be very proud of. And I think that we have uh, in place from us as a board going all the way down, um, you know, we have all the, the right pieces in place and we're excited to see what is going to, you know, how it's going to all evolve over time. And I just want to add a close. Like Robin? Sure. I wanted to jump in and just add, you know, just as a real specific example, Dr. Burns in the last week or two just sent us a document and asked for input on marketing for enrollment purposes with a plan set out for the various ways. And I, I don't have it all committed to memory, but, you know, a very specific plan for going out, okay. getting the word out, getting students um, to enroll and, you know, really making a very concerted effort through a number of different ways, a number of different mechanisms to get students interested and set up to start at Hogan. Very good. I, I see nods from your fellow board members, so they must have, they must have, must have agreed and, and Matt's smiling. So that's always a good sign, right? <laughs> Um, I don't know why this made me think of this, but um, so the makeup of your board right now seems, you know, pretty diverse. It's pretty strong in some areas. Are there areas that you would like to see be strengthened in your boards? Uh, is there a hole someplace that you're like, we just don't really have something that fits there? Um, you talked about your different, uh, you know, breaking down into different committees and stuff. But is there a, is there a hole or a gap that we should be kind of concerned and watching? how you address that? Uh, I do know that there, um, I can't think of any offhand. I'm, I was probably the whole for a long time, but just being an architect, and a lot of times there's nobody in that construction AE industry. So I may have been the gap that that, that got filled to some degree because uh, I've quickly gotten pulled into some of the planning and, and, and facilities walkthroughs and understanding about things. So that's probably one. I, I can't think of others, uh, any, and else on the board can think of any other gaps. I do know that we have one board member that we're looking to add to get to seven. I know that is a board, like a governance goal to get to seven members here in 2021. Mm -hmm. And obviously we'll have to really identify, um, you know, what that, what those skill sets and needs are. Okay. Yeah, I, I think the, the question is if, if you can pick your, your dream board member, who's it going to be? If you were going to write a job description, right, Kathy Jo? What? Right, right. I'd like to see us consider adding somebody with fundraising. Yes, I was just going to say that. I was going to say, yeah, it was true. <laughs> yeah. There's always that money thing. <laughs> yes. Uh, that's a good answer. And I think that we filled a lot of, you know, by having our committees growing and having everybody involved in many different capacities, it's definitely, we filled a lot of those, you know, quote unquote gaps. Okay. And, um, you know, I'm 
very proud to be part of this whole board and process personally. Well, our resident board expert is uh, Peggy. And I, I, I think she would, well, do you have anything else to say about that whole question thing there, Peggy? No, I, I'm really pleased that they're looking for a seventh member. Um, I've seen it come down to a split board and that's yeah. not always a fun thing, but sure. I, I'm pleased with the goals, with the, with the concern for professional development and uh, yes, a fundraising person would, <laughs> would definitely add to your overall sure. board setup for sure. I think you're going to find too that the people that you already have right there under your fingertips will have skills mm -hmm. that you didn't know and they'll they'll come forward and you'll say well for heaven's sakes who knew that you already had that uh, you're going to grow to uh, under these new challenges you're you understand you're going to be really under the gun. Matt? Interesting. Yep, no, I, we understand that there's a lot of challenges ahead. So, uh, but we are we are primed and ready. <clears throat> uh, you've already talked about the changes you've made as a board, I think, uh, toward mm -hmm. future excess, uh, success. Are there any other, can you think of anything else that you might need to attack? You, you, you have lots on your plate. I understand that. In the dream world, what, what would you attack that might ensure the future of Hogan for you? That may be too obscure and it's all right if it is. I, well, I would, I would just go back. To, I just think number one is just, um, I think the success of our committees will be important. Um, I think to just be able to take informed decisions as a committee back up to the full board and to be able to make informed decisions quickly. Uh, I just think scaling our decision making and the committees will be a key part of our success moving forward. Is that it? I couldn't have said it any better. <laughs> okay. Uh, Let's talk about your whole uh, Hogan Prep community. Not, 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 not necessarily folks that are are walking their kids to school in the morning, but the community that is Hogan the school, the entire school. How how focused do you think they are on academic success? And do they understand how critical that is for this school? I'm sure there's several or a number of board members that could uh, could take this one. Um, I certainly invite that. Um, but you know, I think our demographic is, as we've talked about, I guess, I'm hoping I'm answering your question. Is they have. A, families in the communities have a lot of things on their mind and some of them are more basic than even education which is food and shelter so um you know some things that the that the school you know has instituted is really having wraparound services and providing those things uh to take some of the pressure off of families that they can focus on education um so that's something that we've been very proactive about uh having as a part of our schools overall uh, operations so that families can can focus more on education. Mm -hmm. I would just add in terms of the, the, the focus on the, the community in terms of the administrators, the, the principals, the staff, and everyone all in for this transformation. I think Albert speaks to, to the community we're serving and I think within the building, so to speak, or the buildings, um, just to echo some of our are, um, you know, um, um, losing the word, but, but some of our presentations earlier, uh, the, the, the transformation that has been driven by Dr. Strickland has really been comprehensive. And we as a board get to see not only the, the staff, the administrators in our meetings and hear from them, but we hear from the building principals as well. And you, you really get a sense of the complete transformation that that is really taking over the atmosphere of the school, which is which is really important, and I think, kind of gets to, to your question in terms of whether people are all in. And I think part of those growing pains, that that first year of transformation, is making sure that we do have the team that's all in and ready to go forward with the transformation. Yeah, the 
the transformation becomes real with the with families when they see that that the quality of our facilities and a greater focus um you know our, our turn in focus to improving our facilities physical facilities that really reinforces that investment as well <laughs> All right, let me ask my fellow commission members here if they have a question they'd like to ask now as we're starting to wind down. And I know Bailey is going to uh, give us a time check here shortly. And I want to make sure that the board has an opportunity to ask questions of us. So, uh, Peggy, or uh, you I have, have no further questions. Okay. okay. I'm good. Uh, Kathy Jo? Nope, I'm good. Ah, listen to that. Okay. Well, how about you guys? What what would you what would you like to ask us? Well, I'll I'll jump in because I can't help myself. Go ahead. What is it that you are looking for us or looking for from us and how can we how can we help get there? From us as a board. Is that your question? What, what are you look? What is the commission looking for from the board here? I can answer that. I know you can. <laughs> <laughs> and you've done it. You've done it. Each of you, you didn't wait on the chair or turn to a superintendent to give those answers. You own the answers. You own the questions, and you knew what you needed to say. Whether you'd practiced that and was prepared for us, I do not know. But you have committed yourself to making this a success, and I applaud you as a board. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question. Um, I, being um, associated with the with our last sponsor, I would like to know um, on a regular basis how will you as a commission hold us accountable um, for the things that we've talked about, for the things that we've promised? And um, how does that work in the future? Um, you know, um, is it an active relationship? Is it a passive relationship? I just had a, I was just curious. It is not a passive relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, we are, our expectation is that everything that is written into this new agreement that you have between yourselves and the commission, that your intent is to meet every one of those goals and objectives at a high level. And that's exactly what we expect. And I think you all knew that when, when you came to us. If you didn't, I'm really sorry, because that is the expectation of the commission. Mm -hmm. We are not going to be in your hallways. We are not going to be telling your teachers how to behave or what to do at all. You've already told us what you're going to do. And our expectation is you will do it. Thank you. We will. <laughs> We're planning on it. Okay. We're prepared. That's, what, that's, what we, that's exactly what we want to hear. What else do you want to know? I'm sorry you can't see everybody. Uh, and, and even if you could, it's not, you know, it's just not as great as it is if we were sitting in a room it's it's so fun to do that and we are so sorry that we can't do it because we always love board interviews um uh, and getting to see your faces and and the hopeful look in your eyes and i know you're asking those questions because you're very hopeful that this school will continue to survive and so are we peggy do you want to add to any of that the only thing that I think of when I think of Hogan Prep is I have sat through several basketball games <laughs> and you guys always win. <laughs> I'm in, in Southwest Missouri. And when I think of Hogan, Hogan Prep, I think of all the ball games I've gone to and just watched you guys slaughter us. <laughs> but that's a good feeling. You know, it's not just the sports part of it. It's there is such rich history in this school, I want to I want to see it succeed. 
I do. And I know that's what you want. And under our commission, you will succeed or we'll close you, to be perfectly honest. I'm pretty sure you knew that, right? We, we, were, we were very aware of that, yes. <laughs> How are you holding up under all this, Matt? Do you have a question? I am. I think all the questions uh, uh, have been asked and, uh, you know, I can, I, I uh, am very appreciative for, for everyone on the commission, for Kathy, Joe, Peggy, Susan, you know, for you guys to give us the time and Bailey, of course, as well, uh, to give us the time to explain, you know, uh, give kind of give it an, uh, uh, an idea of what our vision is and, um, you know, I'm just very thankful for this. And anybody else on the board have anything else they want to just conclude with? Well, um, with that being said, I, I once again, on behalf of everybody here, I just want to thank everyone from the commission for the time and the opportunity to present everything tonight. Um, and um, I guess, Susan, I'll pass it back to you. Okay. Well, you, you understand what happens next. We'll adjourn this. We thank you very much for uh, everything that went into tonight. I know it's a lot of preparation and, and the, the times are tough and you're trying to do this under really difficult times. We understand that, but you know what? All of us are in that boat. So we're just going to make sure it happens. Um, so thanks so much to the board for, for your time tonight and sitting through a two hour meeting, uh, at least at least it's not snowing. So that's, I guess, yeah, I don't guess it is in Kansas. It's not in St. Louis, is it in Kansas City? No. It is not, that's no. Not at all. Okay, well with that, you know that what happens tomorrow, the commission will meet from nine to 11 and you're on the agenda. Okay. So okay. you'll know something tomorrow. Fantastic, well thank you once again, everybody. Uh, and everyone please have a wonderful and safe evening. Okay, thanks very Thank much. You. Thank Stay you so much. Everybody. Be safe. Thank you.